Hi, in this video we're going to examine some of the benefits of the SPRING framework and whether you should invest your mental energy and time as a developer in this technology. My name is Shad Sluter and I'm a professor of software development at Grand Canyon University. So this is part of a course on web development with Java and Spring. And so this is the index of what you would learn if you were to subscribe. So if this is interesting to you, make sure you click the bell and subscribe so that way you don't miss any of these upcoming lessons. So we're in the introduction part right now and you can see that there is a lot to come. So this particular video is about Spring and how it fits into the marketplace and what it can do and how it compares to some other options. So in the world of Java, Spring and Java EE are your two choices for building web applications. So Java EE stands for Java Enterprise, which is the older of the two technologies. So you can see that the timeline here for Java Enterprise starts way back in the 90s. So back when the internet was developing and rapidly being uh, deployed, and Java, a general purpose programming language, was then applied to web servers, Java EE was the solution. So a framework that allows you to uh, receive requests from clients and generate HTML and then display web pages. And so from the basics to today, it has certainly changed in all of its features. Now, the Spring platform was introduced in 2004, which is still a long time ago, but it was kind of like the 2.0 of Java development for web apps. And so some of the features that are incorporated in Spring make it simpler to work with. And uh, you can see in the trends of today's job markets that anything with Java EE is still out there. Software seems to last a long time, but it is definitely part of the legacy code. Um, Spring can be considered legacy by now too, but it's more modern than the Java EE. So the Spring framework is a set of libraries. It's a bunch of uh, framework to build on. And so it is a way to organize your code so that way other teammates and other companies even can agree on how to design a software package. So it was introduced in 2005 because the developer community saw flaws and shortcomings in Java EE. And so Spring is definitely an improvement for the programmer. So Sun began incorporating some of these improvements after they noticed that Spring was working well. So what we're going to learn in the course that you're watching now is about Spring Boot, which is a slight extension to the Spring framework. So Spring Boot is an open source framework. You can install it for free. It comes from a company called Pivotal and it will make your startup projects quick. So it's an extension and it allows you to do a few check marks and install the features that you're interested in and your application is up and con configured correctly and it has all the dependencies pre-installed for you. So it's a great way to get started quickly with a, a Java app. So let's take a look at some of the popularity of frameworks. So you can see that uh, Java and Spring Boot are in there in the mix. There's not one thing that is like the ultimate way to build a website. You can build working websites with most of the languages that you're already familiar with. So Java is one choice. You can use C Sharp if you're using ASP.NET. You can go pure JavaScript from front to back if you use things like Node or React. Uh, you can use PHP with the Laravel framework. You can use Django and Python together. So really the answer to which framework you use is pretty much based on is the trend in a positive direction. So you can see that all of these are pretty stable and slightly growing. But uh, you would also want to ask your employer. So if you're currently in a company that focuses purely on Java, then of course Spring Boot is what you want to invest your mental energy into. If C Sharp is their thing, then you probably want to get into Microsoft's uh, Visual Studio and ASP.NET. So look at your own company's direction. Or if you're trying to get into a company, do some research to find out what they prefer. The reality is there's probably multiple things going on in a company of any size where you're going to have the room to explore. So in my personal experience, I am not an expert in all of these frameworks. I would know something about um, Node and ASP.NET and Spring and Laravel 
and I see similarities between them all. So I would rate Spring as a pretty highly popular framework in the company of students that I work with at Grand Canyon University. There is a requirement to build a senior project. So this is an audience that we're talking about of people that have like three years experience in developing software. So they're fairly young. And Spring Boot compares very favorably to ASP.NET and C Sharp. Students are able to create a pretty good portfolio app with either of these languages or with JavaScript. So I can't say that there's one answer for which framework is the best one. There are differences and strengths and uh, drawbacks in each of them. So a lot of it will depend on your personal circumstance. I'm sure that there are some very strong opinions and people that use their framework are probably going to like it the more that they understand it. So none of these are real easy to master. Uh, you might take um, a year or two to become very comfortable with one of these. Uh, so they're complex. And if you invest your time in it, make sure that you pick one that has a future in your company and with other jobs. Also, which framework pieces are popular? So you can see that the top list here of the Spring Framework has different components that do different things. And uh, we are going to use the ones that are the most popular. So the course that you're about to see, it will practice all of these items. Also, what web server are you going to use? So we're going to be installing a package that automatically uses the Tomcat web server, which by obvious uh, conclusions from this chart is the most popular as well. So you'll be able to de deploy your applications to a server out on the cloud when you're done. And so that's kind of an overview of some of the strengths of Spring Boot and its history and what you're going to be learning soon. So make sure you subscribe and let's go on to create some projects using this technology.